Hi everyone and welcome to the Simple Knit Podcast. This is my little corner of the internet where I come to you from Brisbane, Australia to talk about all the things that I have been knitting. It's just like a big old show and tell. So my name is Eleanor and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co. If this is your first time checking out my podcast, welcome. It is lovely to meet you. And to all my lovely returning viewers, I hope you are well and thank you as always for spending some time with me today. Um, as I said, I'm coming to you from Brisbane, Australia. It's not as hot as it has been. Um, it's a very grey day today and for once it's actually not because of smoke haze, it's just cloudy. Um, there's a little bit of a breeze and it's trying really hard to rain. Uh, they're predicting we're going to have a pretty mild and wet Christmas. So hopefully that rain goes to people who actually need it. Um, more than we do but it'll be a nice change for it to be a little bit not quite as hot and a little bit wet um, so yes um, I wasn't sure if I was going to podcast again before the end of the year um, I don't have all that much content to share but it's kind of my first proper day of holidays where um, my work closes down for two weeks over Christmas and today is kind of the first day where I would regularly be at work and I'm not. I already have no idea what day it is. I keep having to check. It is Monday, Monday the 23rd. Um, but yeah, so I'm starting to get nice and relaxed. Um, I'm not doing anything, not going anywhere. Just trying to do as little as possible really for these two weeks. Um, I'm on a bit of a, I banned myself from watching TV. I am re-watching Twin Peaks, so that doesn't count. But um, <laughs> I watch way too much TV, so I'm trying not to watch any TV, just read some books, do some knitting, just be as relaxed as possible for two weeks to try and like reset and recalibrate for 2020. So I'm really looking forward to that, but I thought given I had a little bit of time on my hands today, I just was in the mood to check in and record a podcast. So pour yourself a drink. I have some coffee in my very cute little Merry Christmas mug. It's just from Target. Um, I got some, I had a couple of secret Santa presents to do, a family one and a work one. Um, and so then I got some for myself. I really don't need any more mugs, but this was just so freaking cute. And it came with a plain green one and I figured the plain green one isn't specifically Christmassy. So it's useful for more than a month a year. So yeah, as I said, I didn't think it was going to be a very long podcast today, but given how chatty that intro was, anything is possible. So I will start with what I'm wearing, um, which longtime podcast viewers may remember. This is the Christmas top that I made myself last year. Um, it is knit out of a Cartier cotton linen blend yarn held double, um, so it makes kind of like a bulky weight fabric. Um, I'll put the Ravelry page down below because this is a um, pattern I kind of improvised myself. Um, but the most exciting part is it's got a little kind of Christmas tree feature. So the Christmas tree, I used the chart from Andy Sadeland's Yulgren Christmas Jumper, which is quite a popular Christmas pattern. Lots of people have made it, um, but it's just not really practical for the climate I live in. So I took that... Um, chart and made a linen tank top um, it kind of almost because it's quite wide I, I made it quite a relaxed fit it's almost got little cap sleeves um, but yeah a link to my project page down below where I kind of drafted out how I made this tank top and yes it's second year I have I wore it to a few Christmas parties it's just a nice thing to have um, to wear at this time of year so um, that's what I'm wearing and I do have a finished finished object this week, finished project. I finished my second sock out of this pair. I can only find one sock blocker, so there are two of them. But um, these are the socks that I've made. It's just a vanilla sock um, that I made out of a Nomadic Yarns self-striping yarn. This is the colorway Mischief Managed on just her, one of her um, merino nylon blend bases. You can see that I haven't woven in my ends. It's my dirty little secret. Um, well, our dirty little secret now, I guess. <laughs> I hate wait. Uh, just like with socks, I often just tuck them in. Um, but yeah, so this is her Mischief Managed colorway, which I love. The speckles in that um, 
thicker stripe are just like next level. There's so many colors in them and they're so beautiful. I love this yarn so much. And for the heel, I used some Retrosaria Mondim in this really hot pink that is a random number. So I will, it's on my Ravelry page which colorway it is, but it's the hot pink. So I have two of these guys. Um, I just did a standard, well for me, what is kind of my standard vanilla plain sock. Um, so I did them from the top down, <sighs> 64 stitches on a two point nothing, a two millimeter needle. I used um, a little nine inch circular for these guys. So I do about 20 rows of two by two rib, stockinette, fish lips, kiss heel, standard little round toe for the toe decreases. That's all there really is. Um, I really like doing my socks this way. I do often try something new when I am knitting plain socks just to, you know, just to see. You don't know if you like something until you try something else. But this formula seems to work really well. Um, I'm a really tight knitter and I do knit at quite my socks at a really tight gauge, but I find that that just makes them last a bit better and they don't stretch out as much. Um, yeah. I really like doing my socks probably close to um, 10 stitches an inch is the gauge I knit my socks at, which is very tight, um, but it works for me. <laughs> and yeah, nothing else really to say other than I finished a pair of socks and I'm very happy. And so because I finished one pair of socks, I instantly cast on another pair of socks and I actually have made some pretty swift progress on these socks. Um, so this is just another kind of improvised sock pattern, but this time I did a two by two rib. And this is the, this yarn is, it's from Knit Picks and it's their Stroll base, which is like, I think like a 70% merino, 25% nylon, something around that. Um, but this was in a limited edition set of colorways. They had a limited run of these CYMK colors. So it's a gray base and then it has the cyan, magenta and yellow, like the colors that they use in a printer. And I thought they were really cool. And I got the gray one because it reminded me of like a 90s bubble jet printer. Yeah, and I thought it was just really cool and I was really interested to see how it would knit up. So I'm knitting a pair of ribbed socks and as you can see, the, um, because I think these are actually like hand painted, hand dyed. Um, so the, when it came in a, in the hank, you know, it's kind of like when you unroll the skein, it's like a circle, like a loop of yarn. And so kind of half of it was gray and then half of it was the three colors so um it's not quite evenly distributed so some rows are shorter and longer so kind of ended up with a little bit on the leg of some pulling but I mean I don't really mind that it's just how it knits up which is quite interesting and this is what it looks like on the foot where it's just plain stock in it so as you can see so yeah it's just interesting how these knit up. I mean, they're socks, so it doesn't really bother me that much how they look because it's just fun. And knitting with this yarn has been just a real treat because it's a fun surprise to see how how it knits up. So I have done, once again, it's 64 stitches, but I've done this on a 2.25 millimeter needle and I'm knitting it Magic Loop. Um, it's a two by two rib. So I did the leg of the sock is just two by two rib and then a classic heel flap and gusset um I kind of the first pair of, this is actually exactly how I knit my first ever pair of socks but I did them on a bigger needle with more stitches because I didn't know what I was what I was doing but there is an Anne Budd book that's all about sock knitting and I kind of got my formula from that book but I also um Very Pink Knits has a video tutorial series about it's like knitting, I think it's called Knitting Socks in a Magic Loop, and it's like a series of about seven or eight videos. And when I forget what I'm doing in the middle of knitting a sock, that's the um, 
that's the video series that I then go and watch again. Um, it's really good and she is doing it for a pattern that she has written but you can use the proportions and the formulas for any size sock for any stitch count so I definitely I'll link it down below but I highly recommend that video series um, but yeah I'm onto the foot of the sock and now I'm doing just stockinette on the sole and keeping the two by two rib going across the top of the foot and then when I get to the toe decreases I'll just the toe will just be in plain stockinette um, but this is going flying so quickly um, I think it's because the yarn is so fun and I just want to see where the colors are going to end up each row that I'm just kind of flying through this sock so I'm really enjoying that and I should have this one finished quite quickly and the second one on the needles very soon so the only other project that I've been working on is um, my Argyll tank that I've spoken about the last couple of episodes. Um, I've made quite a bit of progress on it. I just have it here on my lap, just make sure it's not tangled. Um, but yeah, this is what I have so far. Um, it's quite hard to show because you kind of knit it kind of in one piece, but it's almost like knitting origami that you kind of knit it and then you assemble it together. So I have pinned it so it's a little bit more obvious what it is. So I've done the whole back and these little, the front parts, and I've just pinned it under where under the arm is um, so that I can show you. I was just up to this first sleeve last time we spoke with a cute little um, Tilting Planets puff skein progress keeper and then I'm knitting the first of the kind of front panels and they come out from the side so it's so very difficult to show um, but there so that's how you get those um, the multi-directional stripes once again I don't feel like so there we go there's the top and if I just hold it this way I've got this front panel, which is all, there we go, coming across here. Does that make sense? You get the idea, right? So my little head will go in here, and then we've got this, this is the front right side coming across here. Um, I'm knitting this in, the navy colour is Knit Picks Lindy Chain, and the grey is a Fibre Smith hand dyed yarn that I talk about all the time because I'm doing three two things in it and um, and yeah the, the colors and the fibers are working together really beautifully I think it's making a really nice effect um, and I'm really enjoying working on this um, I'm definitely not going to need all of the Lindy chain that I bought um, I think I'm like only halfway through my second skein and I'm definitely more than halfway through the top so um, that's one thing that does the only thing that I don't like about um, Pom Pom magazine patterns this pattern was is featured in issue 29 the last summer edition of Pom Pom quarterly magazine um, it's the Argyll tank by Claire Lakewood um, but yeah the one thing I don't like about the way Pom Pom publishes their patterns is that when they're telling you how much yarn you need, they just tell you how many skeins of the sample yarn are used. Um, so for example, this one, I think you needed like three, three skeins of the Quince and Company Sparrow, which is their linen base for the main color. Um, but it doesn't actually give you the yardage. So if you're substituting a yarn, you just have to go off how much yarn is in three skeins of Sparrow and then purchase your yarn accordingly, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was very loud um, Yeah, so you just go with how much Is in three skeins of Sparrow now It may only use two and one third skeins of Sparrow So it's telling you you need to buy three skeins because that's how much yarn you need But you may not need all of those three and so if you're substituting a yarn and having to guess how much to buy. I always end up over buying for pom-pom patterns because it just tells you how many skeins you need of the sample yarn and not the specific yardage, if that makes sense. Um, which, I mean, this was a relatively, I mean, Lindy Chain is not an expensive yarn, so maybe I spent $5 more than I needed to. Um, but 
that is also like yarn that I don't need that I now have. Um, that's my only gripe with everything else about Pom Pom is amazing. The patterns are amazing. The publication itself is so interesting. The way they present the patterns, the samples and models that they use, everything is great. That's my only little gripe. Um, so that's Eleanor's uh, soapbox for today. Pom Pom, please just print yardage requirements and not number of skeins in sample yarn because not everyone wants to knit in the sample yarn. Um, that's Eleanor's rant for today. But other than the fact that I may have spent five dollars more on Lindy Chain than I need than I needed to, um, I'm really loving really loving this top. I think it's going to be super cute. I was a little the only thing I was a little bit worried was that um, it was going to come down a little bit low in the front because these straps just looked really long. Um, but looking at it and I have kind of tried this on as much as I could um, once I got this front panel done and it actually sits really nicely it kind of fits perfectly so I'm really happy with that I think I'm knitting the fourth size um so yeah there we go oh finally it shows off slightly in a way that slightly explains where I'm up to um but yeah I'm really excited I just kind of want to get this I want to get this finished as soon as possible, maybe by the end of the year. Who knows? I don't have that much. I mean, it is it is very quick because it's kind of a cropped tank top. There really aren't very many stitches to do. So you never know. Next time you see me, I might be wearing that tank top. Um, so, yeah, that's all I've been working on. Um, and, yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit reflective. Uh, to be honest, the end of the year has come quite abruptly. It's been quite a busy full on year for me. Um, so I'm just kind of excited for it to be over. Quite frankly, I'm really enjoying having a bit of time off work. And I think as we get closer, I love New Year's. Um, not a, haven't been super Christmassy this year. And even when I am Christmassy, I'm not a super Christmassy person. She says while wearing Christmas earrings and a Christmas top. <laughs> um, yeah, you, I'm more of a New Year person. I love that, you know, no matter what kind of year you had the year before, you can kind of set a, a reset on New Year's Eve and have whatever kind of year you want. I mean, obviously, there are complicating factors. That's very simplistic. but And you can always have a fresh start whenever you want. But that's something I do love about... Cel I, I really do, I think. I celebrate the New Year quite enthusiastically because it's just a holiday that I really... I really enjoy. Um, but I haven't really gotten down to, I do get quite reflective at this time of year. I haven't quite gotten super reflective yet and I haven't thought about kind of what I wanted, any sort of goals or ideas for 2020. Maybe I'll save that for the first podcast of the new year. I have to think about that a bit more, but I did want to share my two, some of my favorite makes from this past year. And so I thought I'd do my two in my mind, most worn and most used finished objects. And they're actually both in Brooklyn Tweed, which is very strange because um, I, I really like Brooklyn Tweed yarn, um, but I mean, I live in the tropics. You wouldn't think that a really woolly yarn would be my two most, most used finished objects. So the first one I have here is my Void Shawl by Melanie Berg. This was originally published in um, Amirisu magazine, but that was a number of years ago, so it is available for individual purchase. And it is a wildly popular pattern. Hundreds of people have knit this shawl, and it is, I can understand why, because it is gorgeous. This is, um, the yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Yellowstone colorway, this amazing, like, golden olivey browny color but it has a lot of yellow in it so it's really bright um and it's a huge shawl it is a little bit broken it does need to be fixed because this um edge is very tight and i managed to snap a little bit of it but because this is a super grippy yarn it hasn't come unraveled so that's very good um it is very very large it's a huge shawl um but i love it i wear it as a scarf this way um, it's super cozy you can kind of wrap yourself right up in it but it also it looks really cute you can just shove it over your shoulders 
and it's really cozy this way as well. Um, I took it with me when I was on international flights and things this year. It's really great to travel with. Um, it's like having a blanket with you all the time and I just absolutely love it. I love the colour. It goes, because I wear a lot of black and grey, it just, especially when it's really cold, this colour just brings a bit of life back into my wardrobe and I love it. I love it. I love it. And it's, it's a really, has a really wide wingspan, but because it's not super deep, it actually folds up and packs up quite small. So it's really easy to kind of cart around with you as well. So I've gotten heaps of wear out of this. It probably needs a reblock. Um, so I do need to do that little repair. That's one of my summer jobs is to do that little repair on that edge and then give it probably a little block. But that's my void shawl that I absolutely love. And my other most worn knit from the year, I would say, I actually cast it on just after Christmas last year, um, but I did finish it in early 2019, so I'm counting it. It is my beautiful Ginsberg shrug. So I loved this pattern when I saw it and I loved knitting it. It's in Brooklyn Tweed Quarry in the serpentine colorway. But to be honest, even when I was knitting it, I was like, I love this, but I'm not sure how much wear I'm gonna get out of it because it is in a bulky weight yarn and I just wasn't, and it's quite, you know, uh, boxy, drapey kind of garment. I'll pop it on. I'll just, have, I'll just sweat for you. Um, and I thought, I don't actually know how much wear I'm gonna get out of this. I wear this thing all the time. It is just perfect. So as you can see, it's quite loose and drapey. This is the, it comes in two sizes. I believe it's designed by Nora Garn. And yes, it is. The um, Ginsberg Shrug by Nora Garn um, for Brooklyn Tweed. And this is the smaller of the two sizes. And um, I'm like a Australian size 12. I have quite a large bust though, so I usually have to go up a few sizes in knitting patterns, but I've, this is the smaller size and it absolutely swamps me. I know that um, my friend Bronte, who I'll link her Instagram, she's made this as well, and she's a little tiny pixie of a girl, and she made it out of shelter instead, so a worsted weight instead of a bulky weight, um, because she's so little, she just made it in a smaller weight. Oh, um, at a, like a, a lighter yarn so that just made her gauge tighter and it fits her really well. Um, so that's an idea if you are a little pixie and not sure and want to knit this but it's a bit too big for you. Um, it's got this really fun cable detail. I actually watched, knit this mostly watching James Bond movies which was very fun um, but I wear it all the time. It's nice enough that you can kind of wear it to work and wear it out but it's also so comfy to just throw on over leggings at home it's just like the perfect amount of it keeps you warm but you still have your arms free to do stuff so even in winter um, it's kind of the perfect just jacket to throw over everything and because the Sun is so bright you can actually see those beautiful cables but I yeah as I said I loved the pattern but I wasn't exactly sure how much I was going to wear it and I wore it all the time and this yarn wears so well, so even though I've worn it heaps, there's hardly any peeling. It's just beautiful. So those are my two probably most most used, most loved finished objects of the year. I love all my knitwear equally and passionately, but those are the two that I've definitely got the most wear out of. So let me know down below um, what your favourites or your most used finished objects for the year were. I would love to hear. And if you have any kind of goals or aspirations or things you want to achieve in 2020, let me know as well. Maybe give me some goal inspiration. Um, I'll probably talk what, I don't know if I'll have any knitting goals, just keep knitting. <laughs> My making goal is to keep making. Um, but I'm going to definitely get quite reflective over the next week or so. And so when I see you next year, which I can't believe, um, I can't believe how quickly this year has gone. Um, when I talk to you again, I will hopefully have maybe some 2020 knitting plans to talk about. So I hope you have a really restorative holiday season, whatever you celebrate, whether you celebrate anything or nothing. I hope you're able to take this time to just relax and reflect and um, have a fresh and joyful start for the new year. Um, 
thank you so much to all of you, whether you've watched one episode or every episode this year. Um, I've really appreciated sharing my obsessive hobby with you. So, um, yeah, I really do appreciate that you take time out of your very busy lives to spend some of that time talking knitting with me. So yeah, as I said, have a wonderful holiday period and I will talk to you in the new year. Bye.